me, fishy is more than just a passion. For me, it's an obsession. There's not enough information in a book that can teach me everything. I actually eat fishing. For you? Drink fishing. And I even sleep with the fish. Welcome to the wacky world of the totally awesome fishing show. Actually, we've got to film it going back, guys, because I don't want to pick that camera up and lose the light as well. Falling to pieces. Anyway, people, we're here out on the ocean. We are indeed again very much alone in a boat. I'm at a mark called, I don't know what it's called, it's near the South Puller Boy. Everybody knows it, everybody fishes around here. And I'm going to give it a go and see what it's on the bottom in deeper water. I'm indeed in. 75 feet odd, maybe 80 feet of water. Now, the idea is that I want to stay out into the dark. Indeed, I want to stay through the night into the dark in a boat on my own. I'm not going to say I'm not nervous because I'm extremely nervous because you don't know what's going to happen during the night. And once it's dark, it's dark. It's not a question of roaring around the ocean going home quite that easily, is it? Because you might run into something, or indeed somebody might run into you. But for the present time, the first half of the day is a five o'clock start. Yes, and it is now 20 past nine. I am anchored. The wind is about, got a bit of east in it, which is unusual, but it's going to be very hot. That's going to start a convection current inland and suck, I believe, a southerly wind in. Now, sometimes this could be quite a bit. It can be threes and fours, which is extremely nasty. I've got nowhere to hide. But I've got on the bottom, being in the deep water, there's an outside chance of a taupe. There's an outside chance of a smooth hound. I've got my bigger rods out there, uh, 30 pound blanks, uh, TLD lever drag reels. I think one's a 25, one's a 20, and one's a 15. Braid on one, 50 pound mono on the other, which is basically just my shark line, heavy duty line. And indeed, I have the old girl here. This is the very same cow style blank that Wayne got his first shark on. I wish I hadn't said that. 500 pounds, Paul Beagle. It's on one of our films, check it out. We've had others since then, obviously. Um, and threshers. I'm going to put this out. Now, I've got a little bit of chum. I've had a freezer, freezer clear out. I've got a little bit of chum and I'm going to put it in the water, but not during the daytime. I'm going to take a gamble because there has apparently way, way down that way, long way down, been a thresher shark seen jumping twice, two different sightings. So I do not disbelieve it. It's getting near that time of year. So I feel, although I want to catch something on the bottom, it's that time of year where Graham's brain goes slightly peculiar and I start putting out <laughs> big baits under floats and 600 pound wire steel traces. So I'm going to run a, I'll probably catch nothing, that's shark fishing. Anybody does shark fishing, especially threshers and pool beagles, especially threshers. <laughs> There's no guarantees, folks, like all fishing. So here's my setup. Fairly large, substantial shark trace, about 600 pound wire, something like a 10-0 hook, uh, crimped on to 400 pound rubbing leader. Thresher sharks have long tails. I'm after thresher shark. If anything comes here, it could be a thresher shark. I use a net caught float and I've got a selfish release clip on the top there. Anybody can copy it, it's not my patent, I didn't invent it, but the method of doing this I have never seen before. It's on many of our shark films. It's just a release mechanism so we don't have to pollute the ocean with balloons all the time. There's enough plastic in there, isn't there? I fear the wind's going to get up, so I figured I'd do this now. Anyway, I passed Wayne on the way out. 
he's with another chap inshore on a mark called, I think it's called Boulder Bank. I'm not even sure if I've ever fished here in my life. Driven over it loads of times. And I saw him have a black bream there and I think he's had a couple of dogs. He may well come out here and give it a go. Um, I suppose it's about a mile. Wouldn't surprise me if we see him out here. And then tomorrow he is going gun, gung ho. He's going on a big drift tomorrow for trying to catch this thresher shark. The reason I spit on the knot, guys, there, so it pulls down and doesn't burn the line, because we've got to think, beginners, novices, and you need pairs of teeth. Don't go anywhere to sea or any fishing situation without taking your teeth with you. I set this at the predetermined depth. This has a screw there which adjusts that tension and the line pinches into there. It's for sail fishing. Then when a shark takes, it goes click, pulls free, and this then slides up and down the line. Stays on the line all the time. You can get shark after shark after shark. You just fold it over, pinch it in that clip, reload it, it bobs around like this. And when you strike or the shark takes it, it does that. Right, let's get a bait out there. Enough of this talking. I think I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna put a bit of a lead on this to get it down. I wanna run it deep. Okay, here's where I'm gonna put my, uh, my shark bait on. There's my hook. Hopefully you're gonna see this. Always difficult with the head cam. Just the way I do it. I go through the, they call the throat latch. I definitely wanna come out the center of the head right there because in this current it might spin. I just pull it through trying to keep everything intact and then how simple is this? I go into the body again about mid-section, out, it's all in our sharp films, put a little split there, that's just to take the uh, shank of the hook so that when you push it down, as you push it down the hook point comes up and I could even give that a bit of movement just split the back half down here to make it a split tail bait so that when it rises and falls in the water it does actually, I don't go through the backbone, I just stroke in the backbone. If there is a, a shark down that's a little bit twitchy, as it rises and falls and this thaws out a bit more, this will flap. And of course it lets a bit of smell out as well. The depth on the sounder I will show you. There are no secrets on this boat. It says South Puller there. That's where I am. Allegedly, according to this electronic wizardry, 25 meters there. I want to be 20 meters. So let's call that 60 feet. A span like this is normally a whole, what we call a fathom. So I'm going to go for 10 of those. I have got my four ounce weight here just to try and keep it down a bit in the current. And hopefully this one, another boat coming up, this one won't swing. That's the theory. The whole of my life is theorizing. I just lower it over the side, don't throw it, don't want any tangles. If there's a tangle and a slightest weakness, Mr. Thresher Sharp will get it. He will find that weakness. Okay, so I'm gonna call that two fathoms of trace. And you just see that you might be able to, I can see that in the water and I haven't got Polaroids on down there. So I've got eight there, uh, two there, so I want another eight. One, two, get less drag there. Three, four, five, six, Seven. I've got no chum, so there's no point putting a bait near the surface I feel, unless I saw mackerel spattering. I then, now this is going to be hard for me to do with this camera, I've already showed you. This will be hard for me to do with this camera, but we'll try, hopefully I just pinch that down into there, nice and tight. Listen, there's an adjusting screw on the other side, so you can tension that up, make it nice and tight. If it pulls out, I've got to reset it. And then, as you can see, the current is ripping out here. I've no how long, no idea how long I'm going to be able to fish here. And I'm going to let that go way back between my uh, ground fishing lines, bottom fishing lines, or whatever is down there, hounds, rays, small tope. 
See the guy goes right past us there. And uh, you can always tell they go right past you, veer towards you, the engine revs go down and they ping your numbers and alter it by what they think is the depth. They think I'm on a secret mark. No, I've never been here before. Now this is a risk guys because I'm at anchor. So if I hook something, I've got to hope it's only about 150 pounds, 100 pounds. I could probably do that at anchor. We've done that with pool wiggles before, so that's not a problem. 200s we've done. 200s at anchor. That's it. Just enough tension so it doesn't overrun. That goes in the shotgun in the centre there and we are set. If that one goes off, trust me, I shall be hopping about pretty quickly. Now, with this heavy tide running, you can see the lines, I like to be on the bottom. So I'm always doing this. I pick it up, I put it out of gear, I lower it, let it run back till it stops. Now you've got to feel the lead hit the bottom. If, ow, just felt it then. He fell over as well. I'm using sardine for bait, I'm going to show you. Because they are... Ah, what can I say? They come from the supermarket. £1.29 for several. Lovely, lovely sized baits. But the downside of sardines, they are soft. Keep them cool. Use them as soon as you can. And... I elasticate them as well. So i am probably started fishing about 9.15. I'll give it about a quarter to 10. I'm going to wheel one up because if there's small fish down there like bream, they will chew and shred off that uh, sardine pretty quickly. And I'll try a bait with um, probably squid on it, which is tougher. So here we are. It's all set up. I've got a couple of shark tags left. If we get a tote, we can shark tag it. And I've got other stuff down there as well. Guys, 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 guys. That's a slow moving pickup. Get this head cam on. Somebody watch that rod for me. It could just be a chunk of weed, it could be anything. It's not banging like a fish, but you have to treat everything like a fish. It's lock and load time. Weed. Now the bait's okay. That was just a chunk of weed, put an extra pressure on the line and pulling up line up. It's, I'm going to have to go for bigger baits here. Uh, sorry, bigger weights. So I think while that's up, I'm going to go for a bigger weight. I want to make sure, and I keep emphasising this, folks, you need to keep, you've got to keep that weight absolutely nailed on the seabed. There is a chunking great weight which I have to say, I hate using, but it's the only way to get me a chance of a take. Strangling myself with this microphone cord. And that could have been a bite, but I don't think it was. Sardine's still there. I'm gonna to have to do these other rods as well. Hello. Just watch, somebody watch that. Smith, watch that. That one over there pointing at the Isle of Wight, pointing at Dunno's head. Now heavier lead and braid here, like this, I can go bang. If you watch the rod top, watch the bend in the rod. Here we go. Bang. You can feel it absolutely hit the, hit the seabed and that's what you want. You want to be in contact with the seabed all the time. And it's running like a river here. You can see it going past. I wonder will the anchor hold? I hope so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Oh. That's a fish, boys. Surely that's a fish. Oh! That's on a 30 pound boat rod. Just as I put the headcam on. Oh, hello. Hello, ladies. Here we go. Check those other rods. Check that damn shark line. Man alive. Well, there you go, folks. I haven't got the fish up. Oh! But it's a good one, whatever it is. And it was on sardine, one of the cheapest bait you can buy. Of course, if this falls off, I'm going to look so stupid. Well, I'm not, because you saw me bait up with sardines, and that's what I've got on. Whole sardine. I just saw one twitch on the rod top. Didn't pull any line. Didn't pull any drag. Didn't take any ratchet. Oh, it's heavy in this tide. And uh, I thought, I'll just take a chance and put the head cam on in case. Unfortunately, I was filming yesterday, the boat stuff, back home. 
Forgot to recharge the battery. Oh dear, Graham. This could be a bit dodgy. I'm just hoping I get this one fish out of it for you. I don't know what it is. I, I got it as 99% sure this is not a ray. If it is, it's a big ray. Too many head shakes. I don't feel I would get a smooth hound at all on a, on a whole sardine. It's going to be squid and crab. Come on, baby. There's nothing worse, I'm sure you guys appreciate it, than losing a fish that you don't see. The speculation, well, listen, you don't get it if you go shark fishing, do you? Because if it's a thresher shark, generally it jump out of the water. If you're going poor wiggle fishing, oh, he took some line. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. He's that drag, he's a drag. Let's not be uh, too heavy on it. Let's see the fish first. I can't think, well, this is a fairly doggy fight. Fairly dogged. If this is a dogfish, I'll be so embarrassed. But indeed it's not. It is, folks, down there flashing away. A strap congreal. Well, there you go. That was that funny head shaking and banging. And they definitely, definitely seem to like... Oh, he's kicking. Seem to like the old sardine. Let's see if we can get him in the boat for you. A lot of people don't like congreals, don't like fishing for them. You can't eat them. I personally love congreals because they fight back. And if you're stupid enough to let them, they will bite back. Oh. Loud and clear, Congo on the line. I... Man, this current's like a river. Slowly, slowly, slowly. I'm not grabbing, guys, the main line. I'm grabbing the trace. There is the, just a small conga, but listen, I don't have a problem with that, especially when he slaps me in the face. And he's unhuggable, which is quite unusual for a conga. These are my new patented extended pliers, which I feel won't get this one out. I, I don't really want him in the boat because they got a lot of slime. He's gone. Because, bearing in mind, I've just painted my deck and B, I'm staying all night. Hope to anyway. I do not need a slippery deck. Woohoo! Yee-haw, as they say, fish in the boat. 30 minutes. Oh my god, why, why did I not bought more? I should have bought more sardines. Where would we be without elasticated thread? Here is a really crappy bait that I'm actually making some use of. Soft bait, elasticated thread, does the job. I think that was due largely to me nailing that bait on the bottom with that big lead. Look at it, you could almost troll that. Don't let them down too fast, guys. Stop it with your thumb every now and then. It's not a race to the bottom. If you have a race to the bottom, you get a tangle, it spins up around the main line. It'll all tangle and you won't catch a fish. God, I think I need a pound and a half of lead today. I'd say if I hook a thresher, it's going to be almost impossible. I'll probably have to cut the anchor rope or buoy it off in some way, shape or form. I'm down. I'm lifting the rod. I've followed the tip down. Watch. Bang. Bit of line off. Lift it. Bang. You can actually see it. You can feel the bottom. Just keep dropping it back until it won't drop any, f any further back and then you should be okay. Wow, nice to get that first fish, I've got to say. This is just getting a bump on the same rod again. I'm going to just show you the rod top there. I've had to, I'm barely holding bottom with a pound and a half. There's the bite. I've no idea if it's big fish or small fish. So what I do, just feed him a little bit of line. Because there is a massive belly like this, massive belly from the, from the top right down to the seabed where the tide's pushing against it. So I want to make sure he's got it. It's sort of unfishable, but I'm, I'm doubling up with the leads now. I probably wouldn't even get the anchor up with the boat if I tried. Now this guy's still tapping away there, so I'm figuring he might even be hooked. I might have to go to lock up on this. All I do is point the rod and... Well, is that a fish there? No kicks, people, no kicks. It's a long way back. Oh no, slowly, stop me winding then. It's not a big fish, and this tide and all this lead. 
probably end up being a dogfish. Tell you what I'll do, I'll click the camera off and I'll show it to you because it's going to take me a while to crank this puppy in. Is it a baby ray? Do you know guys, I don't even know what this is. It's flapping, oh it's a folded up ray, I think, flapping in the tide. <laughs> if you can imagine the way Ray's wings are folded up, could be a spotted Ray, which is cool. Oh yes, yes siree. Well that was worth all that effort, wasn't it? Especially if the leg comes off and smacks me in the teeth. There he is. Down there is a nice, neat, I think it's a spotted Ray, is it? I'm calling that a spotted Ray. Put him up here because I can he might relax and I can show him to you. I don't think these kiddies grow very big. Still got thorns around him there, look. still got thorns. Very pointed nose to it, I notice. Nose tis, nose tis. Spines down the back here. Clasper, so it's a male. So I've got that round down there, it's a really nice little spotted ray. A lot of winding, not a huge amount of sport because obviously. I do like their eyes, very close, I hope you guys see this. This one, so he's folded his wings up, he's crunched on, yes that's right, if I get the hook out, he's crunched on sardine, same rod, there's the hook, let's get him back, over you go pal, brilliant, wow not a bad old start, and there look, because I elasticated that sardine on, I still got a little bit of bait there that he's crunched on. I don't think he would have taken the whole one, but you know, brilliant. As far as I'm concerned, worth getting some more sardines, people. I'm going to run out in about an hour. Smith, watch that rod in the back corner. Well, it's gone very, very quiet. I'm having trouble holding uh, the lead on the bait on the bottom. I've got two one-pound leads on one of these. And it's mono. That one was the braid which cuts through the water better and I was making do with about a pound, a quarter pound or so, a pound and a half lead. I'm now I'm, I'm out of it totally, but I just got the feeling this deep hole I'm in, there's fish here, but I just need the tidal conditions so that everything relaxes and the bait's on the bottom. I don't even know if I'd be able to get my anchor up steaming. It must be, I don't know, four or five knots. It's cranking through here. But that gives me a little five minute spell just to talk to you about seasickness. Because on the way out, when I stopped, had a chat with Wayne on his boat, he had a gentleman on there, and oh, he's queasy, feels queasy, feels seasick. Listen, anybody can be seasick, but trust me, I've got the t-shirt, but not for many, many years, because there's certain rules that you can apply. Don't go on the beer the night before, followed by a huge fried up breakfast, not good. Stick to something bland, plain, cereal, something like that, um, cup of tea, take plenty of liquid with you, so the main thing I feel is don't stay in the cabin. Now that's tough when it's rough and the spray's coming over the side, especially on a charter boat. So if you do go inside, the main thing I think is the main thing is to look to the horizon, to look outside and get a mental fortitude. My God, I feel great. <sighs> you know what I'm saying. But the other thing I wanted to talk to you was about, I wanted to tell you about my ginger nuts. I know, I know some people think it's personal talking about my ginger nuts, but in fact, these things are ginger nut biscuits. Now just, I gave that chap in the boat, threw them over, I said take half a packet mate, just nibble on these, ginger is supposed to settle the stomach a lot, honestly not mucking about, that's what they're here for, tell you guys about it, just ginger nut biscuits, cheapest chips, got a little sweetness, don't gorge on them, you know, just want to nibble away. Hmm. Just a little bit, nibble away, look at the horizon. If the boat's going along, you look at the stern. It's just a sort, a lot of it's a mental thing. It is a mental thing, and I would advise, as well as taking out your ginger nuts, is get yourself a seasick a pill. And if you take generally one the night before and one in the morning, that will generally give you that wooziness and it just slows everything down because it's, it's like something called Menia's disease, which is a disease of the inner ear. And they say there is not a person on this planet living, oh, I don't get seasick. No, the scientists say if you're spun or you're shaken about enough, you will be seasick. It's the way the inner ear works. So a lot of people get used to it, get yourself 
some ginger nuts and get out there and enjoy the sea. Look, it's, it's pretty flat today, but if it does blow up, I should be noshing on these. Whoa, man, that was hard work. I got the anchor up, got the lines in. It took me 15 minutes to get the lines in. I've got three pounds of lead on one. Shocker, absolute shocker. That was a bit of a surprise, that one was. How much that is pushing there. I'm feeling there'll be fish here, but man, I've got to wait nearly five hours. So I'm going to go inshore on just a regular rough ground mark, and hopefully, hopefully the tide's a bit better there. All right, there we go. Go to Cursor. I tell you what, there's some really good ground here, guys. I mean, you can see this. Look at it all. Really good stuff. And I've pressed something there. Press something. What have I pressed? Dangerous things, these machines. Uh, I've got to go back on a 16. Okay. Off we go. managing to, uh, they're holding, but they just, is your bait on the bottom, that's a trouble. So I'm going on about 35 ribs, trimming it back, it's more than enough. Go back in here and away we go. Well, I'm back way in shore, guys. A lot shallower. I can hold bottom now. I'm complaining there's hardly any tide. There's not much tide at all, but that enables me to put the shark line away, put a thresher shark. I feel a little bit too close to shore. I'm not going to go uh, right in shore yet. I'm going to save that for late afternoon, I think. I've got a running ledger, and for weight, I'm going to be using. No, you thought I was going to be using that combination padlock. Wrong, that was silly, wasn't it? I'm going to be using, yes, this one, look. A little bit bigger, next size up. One I couldn't find the key to is a brass one. So it's not going to biodegrade really quick, is it? And then I've got a two hook running trace here with squid on for bait. And at least now I can fish that extra rod out for uh, smooth hounds, anything, rays, that sort of thing. I can cast them away to the side. And fingers crossed, we might pick up something else. Of course, the other thing I'm going to say is, you'll notice here the breeze has come right round. It's now southeast, and it's picking up because, as I said earlier, it's so high in land. They're giving heat waves. That's causing the convection. That's rising like this and sucking the air across the ocean. So it could get quite breezy this afternoon. Another reason I wanted to get that anchor up, to be honest. I had some fun getting it up too. Well, I think I'll get the other up tied up. And word is out on the radio: not many mackerel. I've had, a, I've had a couple of plastic teaspoons on this. I'll show you the rig anyway. I've not had a bump. I thought there might be a bream down there. Not a bump. So I'm going to change this now. Hopefully if I could uh, do the drag, I can get it up. Really works well. Well, it works so well I haven't caught anything, but as far as uh, I've got, See if I can hold this. A running ledger weight there. A long trace about six foot. Wait for this one, you'll love this one. Plastic teaspoon. <laughs> Even more budget conscious. Half a plastic teaspoon, another half a plastic teaspoon, and then a tiny strip of squid. And let me tell you, this lot flashes in the water like you wouldn't believe. If there were any mackerel here, I feel that flashing would attract them up and they take that bait at the back. But I'm gonna change this rig over and put another uptide one down out here, see if we can't pick a, a ray up or something else different. Just had a slammer, guys. Absolutely buckled me over, it's got to be a big hound. I just don't need him. Any other lines? Oh, no, 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 no. I've got him on the uptide right over there with a the squid. Well, I haven't got him, have I? I've hooked him. I've hooked him. I'm just trying to keep him on this side. But the trouble with hounds, 
they pretty well, when they get over about eight to 12 pounds, they do pretty well what they want, don't they? Oh no, he's got this line. That's a different fish. Surely it's a different fish. I'll tell you what I feel coming, guys. Not just a hound, I feel a cluster. F -f -f cluster. I reckon he's got this small light rod as well. It's coming up now. Right under the boat. I've got the drag east just in case he, he bolts, which they are known to do. I'm assuming, it might be a tote, it might be a tote, I doubt it. Come on, I could do with a hound after all that hard work I put in, pumping those three pound weights up at the other area. Oh, oh, oh yes please, yes please, Mr. Smooth Hound. Here he comes. Dare I, dare I take the camera out here and show him to you. Oh no, listen, what's that? Bonjour, bonjour mon ami. There guys, he's, he's one of the slickest fish. Woo, baba! That's one of the slickest and hard fighting fish we have in the UK. One of the few hard fighters actually. He's just got hold of that squid tentacle there. He may well come off if he does. It don't matter. I'm going to try and bring him in and show him to you. Up you come, Mr. Smooth Hound. Let's ease him in. Now there's a second hook up there because I've got a tandem rig on. He might go crazy. Oh, I don't want the other hook in me. Just, uh, he's going to go crazy. Oh, that's nearly a jump. I also don't want to get the camera wet. He's in. Oh, he, he's off as well. I've got my bait back. Oh my God. There we go, people. A lovely smooth hound. Wow, he gave me a good fight, that one. A good scrap. Let's get him back. If he doesn't smack me in the face. Stop it. I'm going to try and get a nice picture of releasing you for the folks on YouTube. Zoom. Get in. And I'll tell you what that was. That was a whole squid head that was joined together and I split it down through the eyeballs. How gross is that? I don't care. It just caught me a really nice smooth hound. There we go. Let's get that out again, boys. Oh. That's a conga, spotted ray, and a smoothie. And I need to get this pretty well in the same area while that tide is, is running. Actually, that's not gonna happen. Let's cast it this way. It took over there. Stop it now. Let's flex that bait past. The lead it won't, uh, don't let it down too fast like this, let it go down, stop it every now and then, and hopefully you won't suffer from the tangles, the twists. A bad case of the twists is not good. There's only one thing that cure that, and that's those ginger nuts. If you don't have ginger nuts, you're going to be seasick. In fact, Wayne's just texted me, he to take the gentleman back. Unfortunately, the ginger nuts didn't work for him. It sounds like breakfast went over the side. But I assure you, for some people, ginger nuts do work. And it was indeed a tap on the light rods. I think I might have my other line here, which has got, I think, a big chunk of mackerel on for a tope. But I've got a fish on this rod now. I was actually holding it, I thought they were tiny pouting. In fact, it, may be, it might even be pouting. I've got a lot of small hooks on there. And little bits of squid tentacles. It's always interesting playing with small fish, isn't it? It feels dogfish. I'm gonna I'm gonna put money on a dogfish here somehow. Got that twanginess about it. Hard to describe. It's amazing you can tell. Oh indeed, it's a dogfish. You can tell the fight a different fish. And here I've got that. Just show you the, the lead there. There it is, it's that rolling lead. That's a plasticized one around the outside, I think. So it shouldn't snag. And I've got my small hooks here for bream, but alas, Mr. Dogfish has come to town. He's lucky Mike's not doing a catch and cook, because you would be on a one-way ticket to the campfire. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You can see there, I'll just show you the dogfish, they're tiny little pin teeth. You can, you can actually see them along the edge there. So they are a miniature, a miniature shark, and use a pair of long nose pliers, it's easy to get the hook out. If you, if you lock the tail 
in your fingers here it stops them running around the back of your hand with a sandpaper like skin here very very rough and marking you up doesn't bother the fish and then we can return them ah everybody happy see i just hook this strips of uh, squid on two or three times and lower it down i am looking for bream don't get me wrong i've got three hooks there hopefully you can see that and the lead ball and i just sort of swing it out and then stop it to send the baits past it and then i let it go down much the same as the big big rods don't want it going down fast otherwise it's going to tangle and the current the wind's pushing me off the tides what's happening so i will be making another move but having had oh 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 guys why is somebody not watching there's definitely a bite on this big rod this big ass rod get that drag probably another dogfish but you never know you never know what's coming in the next half hour i think there's a tap on that one as well 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 always on light rods just make sure that drag can be undone like that. I'm just going to hold that while I watch these other rods, guys. Hey, 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 hey! Somebody is supposed to be on duty. That is... That is a screaming... Uh, that's a screaming hound. It's the hounds of the Baskervilles. Uh, there's a boat following us here. They're going to see the Rob Benton want to come over. Actually, I think this isn't a hound. It's a, uh, it's a woo, 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 woo. It's a dog, it ain't a hound. Hound will be cranking it by now, stripping me. Oh. Yeah, I might change my mind about it. It might even be a decent fish. Come on, you game bastard. What's that? What's going on here? I feel 14 lines coming up, guys. Something is very, very dead and big all of a sudden. What's that all about? Oh, drag loose, drag loose. What is this all about? This is a strange old dogfish. Do some short pumps to keep them away from those other lines. Which, oh my goodness, he's gone round. Ah, oh, he's coming in backwards, but it's indeed a hound. And as you know, I said that was a dogfish. What do I know? Look at him go. He's coming in backwards. Hey, Mabel, wake up in there. Got a fish in here, you know, love, eh? Hey? Under there, don't sleep under there, you'll be seasick down there, love. Yeah, I'll have to give you me. <laughs> I'll have to give you me ginger nuts, love. <laughs> oh, Christ, I'm fishing on my own. This one's, this is a royal male. Oh, no, it's a tope. It's a royal male. It's coming in. Parceled up like parcel force. A different species. Oh yes. Mabel, I told you, wake up, love. It's a top. Let's <laughs> let me somebody from Lancashire, Yorkshire, wherever that accent's supposed to be. Right, boys. This is a dogfish that turned into a smooth hound that's now turned into a nice little tope. And I don't know that you're gonna see with the head cam there, those teeth on that. A lovely sleek fish and they've been catching some big ones just hooked in the top there brilliant oh yes do you know I had that down as a dogfish all the time all day long all day long and this believe it or not same same squid that uh, took that smooth I'm gonna shut that barb on that hook now this should come out really easily there you go I've closed the barb on it there he goes, Mr. Tope. Away you go. I've, I've, I've got the, the same bait. I'm so pleased. It's the same bait. Oh my God. Two. Can I get three on the same bait? Is that going to be my target? Same spot. Kill the cast, send it spinning, drop it down. Just check. I've got to check that one. I had a bite on that. Oh, listen. Stop. Stop it, just stop it. Any radio, you send you mad sometimes. Okay, just wound in this one, taking off a chewed sardine. A chewed... Mabel, love, get out of there, you can't sleep like that. Look, you've missed a bloody bite, love. Get out of here. I'll not bring you again, Mabel, I'll not bring you I tell you, I won't have it. 
You want to go to Strictly Come dancing, don't you? You want to go there? Well, why don't you do some Strictly Come fishing, love? Let me do this all myself now. Hey! He's on, boys. He's on. Ye! Closely followed by Ha! Well, if I call this a dogfish, it'll turn into a bloody great smooth hound. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, man. Three fish on the same cast in that direction. I feel the other uptider has to be cast that way. Come on, babe. I just don't need it. If, if it goes that way, ha, huh, it's Snag City. If I can just... Well, I can't keep him. I can't really do much with him, can I? If he wants to go, he'll go. My God. What a good job I moved in shore like this. Just goes to show you, I think all the best fishing is offshore. It's not, it's, it's down to the tidal conditions that enables you to fish properly. I wasn't happy where I was. I know I had the Congo, I know I had the Spotted Beret, but I just felt I wasn't really, well, I knew I wasn't fishing properly. I want to see this fish. I hate losing fish, I can't see. This one's hanging very deep. This does not feel like a smooth hound. Got to watch the props. If he keeps going that way, he's going to swim straight into the light line. Ew, little monkey. Oh, he's off. Oh, he's ripping me. He's taking line now. Oh, he's taking line big time. Holy cow. I'm just trying to get this one sorted out if I can because it is braid. I don't need him tangled with braid. Now, if I can keep him this side, I'll tell you what. I've got a lot of pressure on this, boys. This rod's cranked over, it's a, it's a decent uptide rod. It's gotta be, yeah, it's, it's taupe or smoothie. Holy smoly, that is a smooth hound and a mega tangle. He is going to go ballistic. They don't normally like it when you touch their tail. If I can just get some of that off before he goes nuts, it will be handy, but no, it's too late, Graham. Cut that, oh, oh, oh. There we go, people. That is a nice big smooth hound. A great scrapper. I've got a huge mess to sort out around here. But he didn't get my big heavy rods, that's one good thing. So look at that one. Feast your eyes on a double figure smooth hound. Wow, good session. Let's get him back. And a shower, a free shower as well. That's three times I've cast out that way. And three times I've had good fish on it. Two smooth hounds on a tote on the same rod and the same bait. That's what I call budget fishing. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a good bit of action there. It all came in about, what, 15 minutes? Um, so really, really chuff with those fish. Now, I'm just going to show you uh, how I got those squid head. I said I, I split a squid head in half. I'll show you what I do. All right, here we are in the cooler. Retied that one. I've got chunks like this of whole squid heads. Look at the size of that. That's just the head and guts of one of the squid I caught off the shore. We ate most of them. I wish I hadn't. I was told, do not eat them, Graham. They are superb bait. Too late, we ate a load, but I did keep a few heads back. These are here, the catching tentacles, all right? You can still see the suckers, and I can feel the abrasive nature of them inside. Look how long they are. Here's the squid's tentacles. You see your noise. Now, we got one up on catching these squid. Look back and look in our playlist, and you'll see it. Look how far out. There's his head, there's his eye. That's got to be six inches. Those shoot out at least 12 inches to grab something, and then it draws it back in here. It's locked into the uh, tentacles here and then it's eaten by the beak which is in there. I'll show you the beak. But why not? It's, uh, there's the beak. I'm going to cut the beak out for you. Turn away those, those who are squeamish of beaks. Budgies especially. That black piece there, which I can't get out now. Let's see if I've been I like all these interesting things. There is the squid's beak. I just crushed it inside out. Now, I don't know if you're going to see that. I've snapped one off there, look, there. That there is a part of their beak attachment. That's hard. You can hear that. That is absolutely hard. So, I'm just going to chuck that over the side for Chum. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these off here. 
I sharpened this knife sometime. I did it in about 1980. Then you can see here's here's the head. There's guts. I leave them all on. Here's the head. There's the eyes. There. I'm gonna get several baits off of this. I'm gonna cut it around the back of the head here. And then I just push it flat, look like this, pat it flat, split the tentacles either side. It's just my way of doing it. I don't know whether there's some squid expert out there says, oh, you cut it wrong, mate. Well, I must be doing it wrong because I just had three fish do the self same thing. So I've now, from one head, got two really good baits. I've already got one on here. I'm going to leave that one on and rehook it because it's so tough. This is fresh squid, caught, caught fresh, frozen fresh. Well, most of it I ate actually, but still with the wife. But let's get two or three bits. This is a nice big bait. No wonder I had a big smooth out. This is a big bait, even half a head because there's such big squid through there. Come out where you like the eyeballs, a good spot. And let's get them out. Only an idiot would cast this to a different place, wouldn't he? I've got to cast it back that way. I've no idea why. But three fish in a row can't be wrong. Something's cooking over that side of the ocean. Nothing at all on the mackerel and sardine here. It's quite peculiar. Right, we're all set again. I don't know how much more of this tide I'm gonna have. Hopefully, enough and what we're going to do people is bring this up tide in which has had no bites at all and i'm going to chuck it back that way i'm kind of surprised i haven't had black bream a sparkling day but the wind is fresh the air pressure is very high it's going to be very hot in land especially tomorrow and that's what's causing this ocean breeze they call it sounds like a drink or an aftershave or something now, Peter the padlock has screwed up and is twisted because I let it go down too fast. Can you see what I'm saying there? It's untangled, just unspin it. And Mr. I can't find the key to this one, padlock. It's going around, that one's over there. I think I'll probably cast it over towards the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth. Let's see if that's lucky. So I've got one up here. Got one down there. The tide is going God only knows which way. Not what little there is of it. There's a piece of weed there going past. Almost slack tide. And when it floods, I, I'll probably wait an hour here and then I'm going to go to this other place they call the streets, I think they call it. I don't even know if I've fished here before. Maybe I did once, probably blanked, as usual. What's new? Just check those drags. Yes, I don't want to lose a rod. Nothing on the small rods, really. It's bizarre. I thought there'd be bream here. I just find it curious. I've got tiny little taps. They're both swinging around on the wind now. Maybe they're baby pouting, but I'm not getting anything. Uh, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. These are clear. The line's all over the place as you're tangled in this one. Something's adrift somewhere. Something's not quite right. Something's not quite right, guys. Oh, I'm in the bottom, am I in the bottom? Oh, it's just kicked back. It's just kicked back big time. It ain't in the bottom. Well, I wish I could say I saw the bite, but I didn't. I was messing with the light line, turned around, and wallop, there's a fish here. I thought it was in the bottom. Very often when the boat's swinging like this, it, uh, it drags the lines across the seabed and, it, and you lose a lot of gear. A lot of us will just pack up totally, just till the tide goes around the other way. But hey ho, what a good job I left those baits out. Now this, I'm gonna mark down as a ray because you do get rays over slack water and it's coming up fairly dead i could be totally wrong of course i've been wrong possibly three times today if it starts kicking all of a sudden then it's a it's a smooth down that's untangled itself i just want to see it i just want to see it we just want to photograph you for youtube quite painless i see color got color down there's coming up backwards here's a ray oh very nice ray Oh my god, <clears throat> that is, oh. where's that net, I've got a net there, that's nearly a netable round, I'm trying to see how he's hooked, 
you just hooked in the bottom jaw. That is a nice ray. That is a nice ray, guys. Over you come. Now look at this one. That's a beauty. A bigger mouth, much bigger mouth. That's just what I call the mother-in-law. Spines on the back there. A male fish with claspers. I say fish goes, oh, it's heavy. It's nines, nine pounds. A nice fish. Away he goes. Well, boys, we're having a good session, aren't we? I bet you're glad you came along with me. Few tips and some few, well, some quite nice fish. No bream yet, no black bream. I'll tell you what, this whole squid has been doing the biz. Most definitely. If I get some next year, I will not be eating them. Well, one or two, perhaps. Here we go. I'm going to chuck it way down the back. And hopefully that yacht, as you can see over there, maybe in the distance, and the other boat, they're on the turn as well. Um, I'll probably give it... Well, there's no point. The old saying is, never leave feeding fish. And that's another species I've had there, and a nice one too. So I think I've got to sit it out for the slack tide and just see what comes on the early flood. There is no point moving. I will move tonight if I'm going to stay. I'm going to have to go inshore for safety. You no way would you anchor out here at night. You get chopped up by boat propellers and they wouldn't even know they've hit you. you lights, you can put what you want on there. You just would not uh, risk it. I won't anyway for sure. I'm reclining on my, in my boudoir here, on the floor, on the deck of the boat. It's gone very quiet, it's swung round on the, uh, on the wind, and unfortunately the wind <laughs> has come up. And if I intend staying out overnight, on my own, alone, it ain't going to be pretty pleasant or enjoyable. I'm hoping it might go down, but at the moment you can doubtless hear the slapping of the boat, and this is one of the problems of cathedral hull boats, which is like that. They're a very stable platform until you get waves coming in the tunnels, what do they call the tunnels at the front, and they can be noisy. I mean, if I was in a V-hull boat, I'd be pitching all over the place at the moment. It would be even worse. But this one, but it would be quieter. This is noisy. So in shallow water, where I intend going, A, the waves might be bigger, and B, the slapping of the hull is believed to spook the fish. So therefore, I will have to use my casting rods to get the, the baits away. But at the moment, this is my view from my, I'm going to call this the lounge. There's nobody in the TV chair, as you can see. Nobody's sitting there. But I can sort of see the rods even through there. I can see those two rods there. Nothing is happening. It's gone very quiet, but I am waiting. I am waiting for this tide. I feel I shouldn't move just yet because really, you know, once that flow starts, or those going to be beam on, beam me side on, the waves will be side on, hopefully they won't come over the side, then I feel I get a few more bites. I will give it one hour and then I will move inshore. But it's pretty noisy, as you can doubtless hear by the microphone. A lot of slapping going on. Oh, it's almost pointless trying to, trying to doze off because it just bangs too much. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, I'm sure. And the other thing, I had my head down the back because the sun's out down there. Great, I thought, hmm, I don't think I'll be lighting any, uh, any cheroots up. There's a huge amount of fumes that come down there and get trapped underneath the bench. So I won't be putting my head down there at night, that's for sure.
intend doing tonight guys is going in the close here to the shore because the guy I shore fished with uh, and did a film with around the corner there way, way around the other side um, sent me a text saying they're starting to catch taupe off the shore can you believe now up there somebody I think had a 42 pounder which is a stupendous fish off the shore as taupe are an incredibly powerful fish but they're getting taupe in here he's in that Brackleton Bay area so I've scanned with my binoculars which are field glasses for those of you of a military persuasion and we call them field glasses so all you men in the trenches here if you'd like to jump up and run towards that bank over there and if the enemy starts shooting at you please let me know and I'll being the officer I'll run the other way anyway somewhere in there I think it's Tony just there I've put my uh, field glasses my binoculars on the gentleman concerned and he is indeed I believe residing in a red beach buddy I believe they're called so I'm going to give him a text find out if it's him because I don't know going in there I don't know where I'm going but I wouldn't mind anchoring in there for the night I think I'm going to be away from everybody else traveling because they got out here an entrance called Boulder Gate where boats pass through I don't need to go through there it might be some boat delivery service or a yachty going up and down in the dark oh, 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 oh. missed him missed him missed him missed him a bit of slack this time oh he's there again just watch that just watch that tip guys so I intend going in there and anchoring up I'm just killing time here just to see if I could get a bream and please get that last bream but if they're not going mad I will go in there and settle down for the night and hopefully I will be safe in there and with the outside chance who knows what's going to come when it gets dark it's going to be pretty spooky I can assure you I'm probably going to lay down there and put a pillow over my head and sing hymns or something for the next four hours of darkness well thankfully people the wind appears appears to be easy and I've come inshore had that bream no other bream coming uh, which is a bit strange but this is the way it is but you know I'll settle for the wind dying and that's presumably because the land is starting to cool the heat's coming out of the sun the land will start to cool and that'll stop that convection sucking air which is what happens I feel so fingers crossed I might actually have a reasonable uh, night out here but I've got to prep up here I'll show you what I'm doing I've got some uh, freezer clear out stuff and I'm using my ground bait tube here oh which has got a giant lead on it about a pound and a half of lead it's not like the bait drop it's fixed so all the chum goes inside there most of this is still frozen actually and I lower it down on the line and I can put it on whatever depth I want that way I'm mashing up stuff in here sprats and leftover pike fishing stuff and obviously a lovely piece of trout which I'm going to process and I'm probably going to hang one of those over a half of that cut it there for sharp and just leave it out all night because smells coming off it because believe it or not guys just in here somewhere you know what I'm going to say I'm not, I'm not saying it's great white I'm not saying I'm not saying anything I'm just telling you what a guy's contacted us and said he was surfing there and it went under his boat and that's the honest truth we tried to track him down he sent us an email um, but anyway it was up here in this area I don't think anybody has tried it at night and that is what I'm really really here for is to see if there's anything extremely naughty large and toothy swimming in these waters I feel night is the time that's the real reason I might get a taupe I might get another smooth hound but I've just got to try it if you're a shark nut like I am it's just, it's got to be done it's just got to be done probably blank of course probably blank but someone folks has to pioneer somewhere don't they someone has to do it I'm willing to give it a shot if it's a blank hey ho as the saying goes you're a long time in the wooden overcoat and of course I've already I've already cheated a bit yes yeah, so I got the chum bag over the side there and you can see the slick going all the way back there if I give that a shake that's left over from another trip Look, all the particles still I put the whole bag in the freezer I put the whole lot in the freezer and you can see the slick going back there now that's there for bream oh look I'm not going to be stupid enough to say I'm shark fishing on top of the bream mark I am bream fishing because bream do respond to ground bait um, but it's out there but when I do it in here for sure for sure a shark trace is going out big baits on the bottom big baits on top if I get some sleep brilliant I don't suppose I will but it's got to be tried so let's process some of this stuff 
the thing is, the thing is, people, I'm now in, I'm now in definitely into sh into shark mode, and I just do stuff automatically because that's what I do. Is 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 this chum gets the sharks? So I thought I'd better just show you guys. Some of these are frozen chum, already minced and mushed at home, still solid. If you can use them in an onion sack or in a chum tube, use them frozen. They do. They break down better, they, like, they go longer, if that makes sense. When it's thawed out, you really burn it out quickly. Um, I've got in here, as you can see, a potpourri of rotten trout, sand eels, prawns. Anything I can absolutely, you know, throw away, I've thrown in here. I don't throw anything away. Here are sprats, old sand eels from my freezer clear out. I can let those thaw out. Oh my God, it looks like a roach there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gave me some roast dead baits for sander fishing. I, I cut it all up like this, I mash it all up, right? And then when I just I just get it in here, and then I add the secret ingredient, guys. Very, very cheap. Get it from an agricultural feed merchant. It's just bran. That's all it is, just bran. Cheap and easy. I don't know what it is, a few pounds for a huge sack. I always keep some in the boat because you never know when you're going to go, well, you, you don't know where sharks are, do you? And then I take my uh, persuader down here. The CDs, by the way. Somebody goes, oh, it's a life of luxury with CDs. No, no, no. They hang in the water and flash when we're shark fishing. I'll just spin them around. You might see that they do actually catch the sun there. And that's what I do. On a drift, they're bouncing up and down on the waves. Most of them are records I don't like anyway. So I've made them into those flashing discs like that. Cheap, easy and free. And uh, trust me, they work. I've filmed those being bitten by blue sharks. Sharks, I do tend to know a little bit about. Right. The idea is to mix and mush any oil in there to soak into the particles of bran. Now you don't know. If I was out deep, I would definitely be doing this for thresher sharks, pool beagle sharks, blue sharks, blue sharks. They've actually come in the boat to get this stuff. So mix it all up and just keep topping it up. We've mashed up stuff. Smash it up. This I'm going to put in the bag loose. This I'm just going to mash up a little bit, cut it a little bit and then put it in here. And then when I do move inshore, I'm going to put some in the bag and some in the chum tube down here. Who knows? Look. It's a lot of work. Yes, it is a lot of work. But trust me, when you're out here and you've got a chum trail out, my adrenaline level goes up about eightfold. That's pretty messy, isn't it? That's pretty. Not many people do this. You see, it bothers me not one jot because I know what the end product can be out there. Wouldn't want me making sandwiches, I've said that before. People are shaking hands with me, say it's been a lifelong experience. <laughs> Especially if they can't wash it off their hands. So I've made the move in shore. There's a guy fishing it on the beach here. I think there's somebody dog walking there. Uh, Tony's down there, I think, and other guys down here. So there's three guys looking for a big tope off the shore. I'm anchored, there's my anchor boy. Tide's gone all peculiar on me, and you can see I've got the uh, the chum tube here, and I've got the lead weight on the bottom. So I want to send that one down. Just got to remember, I pulled away and I'd left the rod up in the rod holder here, and I thought, when I pulled the anchor, I thought, where's all this fishing line come from? Yes, an accident is just around the corner when you're boating. And then I left the boating gear and I couldn't get the engine started. I was in a terrible state. We would be night fishing, nobody else out there, everybody's gone home. Now if this gets eaten tonight and there's a, the boat starts tilting to one side and then there's a big snap, I would obviously be starting the engine and going home. Something comes along and eats the whole tube. So, that can stay there. Tuck that up out of the way. Get the rubbish bag down the back where it's the best place for it. 
Okay, electrics, 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 don't need the GPS. I'm here in five, six metres of water. Uh, it's not going to dry out here because there's the drying out part. Uh, it's got wrecking shore, so if I swing on the anchor when it goes that way, it should be well clear of that. Fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed. All is okay. I'll get some boats in, and then I've got to, I've got to have something to eat. I haven't eaten much today. Wow, what a mess. Well, no bites. I got the chum bag down there on the surface. Chum tubes down there. Small rods are out, just basically swarm until it gets dark and I'm gonna crank in. Um, whether I leave my two up tiders out for smooth hounds because they got a squid on them all night, I don't know. But I've got ratchets on those. That's a dead one in the middle. I'm not gonna put the shotgun out. There's only so many rods. In fact, I'm gonna move that there out the way. So he's out the way, hopefully. In fact, we'll put him up the top there and he's totally out of the way. I'll put him here for now. Might see a shark swim past. So I have not an idea what the hell the tide is doing. It seems to have died here and yet on my reckoning from coming out there into here, I've got another hour and a half before slack water. What's going on? I don't understand this. Bracklesham Bay area is so weird, it's unbelievable. So I am on the wind. The wind, I guess the ground is cooling inland. It's gone from south backed up to southeast or veered to southeast, I always forget which way it goes. It's gone around to southeast. Well, if it went east, it'd be handy, it'd be dead flat. But listen, if it stays like this, I should be okay for the night. Fingers crossed in here. So now I've got to have something to eat. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to have spaghetti hoops and steak and kidney pie. It sounds good to me, but just look, look at this. What a setting over there. Now, I've no idea how I feel when it gets pitch black out here probably totally different and a nervous wreck but I've got to try this I've got to be done I may well blank but I just I've always wanted to do a solo overnight in a boat I know it's a bit dangerous possibly a bit stupid it doesn't have to be done but it sort of does have to be I mean Everest didn't have to be climbed did it really you know why would you climb to the top of the biggest mountain in the world only to turn around and climb back down again so it's that situation guys let's get the grub on
got a good fish on people, a really good fish. Going to try and run two cameras on this. It's the tiniest bite ever. It's a big ray. I've had to, I've had to switch a camera on and off. I'm working two cameras here for you guys. I'm talking with Tony over this, 33 anglers along that beach. 33 anglers. I've just put my binoculars along there. Nobody's had anything. This is a thornback, I think. Or is this? Oh man, it's a spanker of an undulate. <laughs> what? Look at this thing. This is. Wow! People, this is a really big undulate. Wait, wait, wait. It's a. Oh, that's a two-hander, boys. That, look at that one. That was worth waiting for. That was worth that sunset, I know. What an absolute corker. A biggie. Let's get it back. Away you go. That was a bizarre fight from that fish. He's a bit tired, but at least he's up the right way. Now, it's obviously getting dark. It is five to ten at night. But just look at the, I don't know if you'll get it with this camera, the absolutely superb, it's what we call the afterglow. If the sun is actually, you get a better sunset like that when the sun has gone below the horizon. It's bounced up into those clouds and then the clouds are reflected in the water. I don't know whether you're going to get it. It's absolutely superb. It's like, I don't know, just a burnished red metal colour. That's why it's worth coming out here. I mean, it's very, very rare. I haven't seen it like this with that sort of light for probably eight years. I came out with one, once with Wayne. We had a superb evening, um, quality evening wasn't great fishing. We had, in fact, we pointed out the fact that it wasn't any different in the night than it was in the day. It just made us more tired the next day. But the actual atmospheric feeling of being out on the water like this, it's even worse than me because I'm on my own. Look at that man alive. As my saying is, that's worth getting out of bed for, I know. Well, in fact, I don't even get to bed tonight. And up there is the moon. And because that moon's up there, I have bought out, and if you're going to see this, this little chappy, yeah, squid jig. I don't know if squid are going to come in the chum, but I'm certainly going to give it a few throws. Fingers crossed, something might come along. Oh, 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 oh. I've got a bite in the back right hand corner, guys. I'm going to try and point to it over in that corner there. Fish off, 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 Try and fish and film at the same time, people. It's freaking impossible. Well, my main problem is oh, big fish on 50 pound test. He's going under. He's going under the other. He's going under the other line. I've got to watch. The only thing I can't get up is, is my chum bag here. My chum tube. Can't even speak. Can't even talk. This is. Oh. I'm going to have to take a camera before I get this up and in. This is a real lash up, guys. I know I'm going to lose it around this jump tube. Get the jump tube in there for now. Oh, I've got a chance. Oh, that was very close to the wedding gear then, Grant. That was a weird bite five or six times. 
Ah, here we go. The light's so bright. Right? You're going to take my word and have to go for this, guys. We might bite through. It's a smooth hound. Do you know, I think that's one of the first smooth hounds I've ever caught on mackerel. That is a... Yes, yeah, a nice smooth hound. Look at this one, people. In the night, a night smooth hound. Does it get any better than this? Oh, please. Ah, oh. could have sworn blind that was a tote, absolutely. There we go, boys. A nighttime smooth hound. Gave me a hell of a scrap, and that was on that heavy tackle. But he kept ticking away at it. He just did, I don't know, it's just the way he wanted to pick it up. But there you can see him. It's a big fish. Not a small one at all, that one, guys. I'm not used to this camera mics, but it's lovely, lovely. It looks like nice colours. But there we go. Let's get it back. Actually, I'm not going to film it going back, guys, because I don't want to pick that camera up and lose the light as well. There we go. And there's the bait. Chewed up mackerel. I thought we were going to lose that fish. Oh, it's going to be hard work. wonder if I've got a big piece of squid. I don't know whether I should put a big chunk of squid. I'm right underneath the boat and now it's gone very quiet, obviously being night time. I reckon that um, th there's no slapping on the hole. A fish will come closer. I think I'm going to go and put a big piece of squid on. Really big piece. That way I've got the chance of taupe and I've got the chance of a smoothie. Get my headgear on as well. Get the torch on. Another one of Mike's. That's better. That's better. I'm going to pull off that mackerel. And that fish was right on the bait behind the chum tube. So it's the first rod behind the chum tube, if that makes sense. Let's give him a... Like this. And I'm going to give him a... I'll show you. Good gob full of squid. Because that was a big smooth hound. Wow, it's so peaceful out here, I can't tell you. Absolutely. So peaceful. Just gonna tip that as well. I don't want to mask the hook. There's a good there's a good bait. Let's get that one over. I don't think I can use the head cam anymore, guys. It's just it's just a very, very high light, it's not a low light camera. This one seems pretty good. keep it sort of in line with the flow the particles coming out from the chum tube and the other thing is I don't know what it sounds like on this camera oh, look. bait's fine on that one a little bit of weed I'm going to lob this one back I'll show you what I'm using as well in a minute don't go away Just crouch down here, sit on this bit for you. Well, you know, I was uh, using that squid. You won't probably see. Well, you can see it in the light. Let's just turn my head torch off. I've got the squid here. Okay. Jig, squid jig. I haven't got the squid yet. But there's a squid jig. And in front of that, I've put what's called a lunker light. If I come to there, you can see it really stands out. It's a chemical light stick. And you put a piece of uh, tubing up the line like this, now I put it there, and then you put the light stick, you bend it and crack it, there's two chemicals in there, it glows, most anglers know about it, but obviously beginners do watch our shows, and I've got it in front of the jig, now I haven't had anything on it yet, but I have had these taken before, and these are the, these are the jigs that are good, because they've got the spikes up halfway at the body as well, and I just thought, being as the moon's up, it's like three quarter moon, full moon, there might be 
the odd squid around, who knows? But I'm just leaving it hanging in the water at the moment and tipping it with a little bit of squid bait, a little squid tail. Well, it's getting uh, midnight-ish, guys. I'm going to put my cabin lights on here. I've actually got cockpit lights. I've got narrow lights, cockpit lights. That's these ones, if I turn that round. Whoa, turn that round. And if I turn that off, you'll see I do actually have cockpit lights. One over there, and one over there. So it lights all the deck up here. But, you know, I don't know what they pull power-wise. Had them fitted, rarely use them because I rarely night fish. And then up the front here, because I'm going to have a stretch out in a minute, I've got, if I can find it, cabin light. There you go, there's cabin lights as well. It's just around there, up there on the right. More than enough. And then of course, as well as that, I've got my camera light. Bosch, which is white light. So, what I'm just going to talk about briefly, because I am going to stretch out, because I've been standing pretty well all day. Just turn those lights off. I've got no door on this. That's why I didn't want a door here. See, I didn't want a door because I wanted to be able to get in and out. So all I've got to do, I want to stretch out. I, all these, I put all these shelves in myself. I just move stuff to the side, and I can get my camera's tucked in there, like this. The way this goes further up in here, just resting over there. Up goes that, and then all I bought is this, just like this thing. It's a thing. It's supposed to be self-inflating. Sounds like a politician, doesn't it? Yep. Just unclip it. I used it on the beach the other day. I just wanted to keep the damp. I mean, there's nothing worse than laying down on the ground. That's where you have a ground sheet. It's not a sort of blow-up one, although I have blown it up. You're supposed to just open it like this, blow up the pillow section, and the rest has got, sort of inflates itself. Anyway, better than laying straight on the deck. I'm trying to show you where it is. Oh, there it is. It's got a little screw fitting here. You undo the screw fitting. Oh, I did that too tight. Oh. That's it. Hear it? And somehow, it fills itself with air. Just gives you something, and then I'm gonna blow the rest up for headrest. takes no space up on the boat and effectively I've got like a little bed, haven't I? So I'm obviously going to keep my hat on. I generally, if I'm going to lay down, I've got my head torch as well. And this applies to freshwater fishing so that I can just go click and I can see anything that's going on. Don't forget I've got the rods on ratchets. The ones I will bring in, in case I want to those off for five or 10 or 20 minutes, are the uptiders. So I'm going to put the jacket on But I'll tell you exactly what is something worth having, just as a spare, whether you're beach fishing or whatever. One of these little things. It's a little emergency blanket. Tiny. Look, look how tiny it is. Just, you can put it in the back pocket. And, wait for this. You just wrap it around yourself as well. It said it provides emergency protection in all weather conditions. You've seen them used on police shows and rescue shows and stuff like that. It reflects 90% of body heat. I'll find out in a minute. Reusable, great, that's what I like to hear. Waterproof and windproof. Compact and lightweight for easy storage. So I'm gonna get probably cold. I did the other day, I did a big 20 hour session on the beach and uh, my legs were cold. Don't wear jeans. Oh, too late, Graham. So look, it just folds out. 
it's like a great big piece of tin foil. I'm going to feel like a piece of bacon or something like that, ready to be cooked. No, sorry, it's only huge. It is absolutely huge. So I can lay down there, wrap myself over with silver paper, and stay warm. Put the bedroom lights out. And I can just lay on top. Oh, and I can still see any rod tops in the light of the top, and I can hear as well. Oh, yeah. This is where I should have been earlier today if it wasn't for those fish. Annoying me. Oh, that's fair. Listen out for the ratchets, people. Well, I've got a customer, guys. Doesn't feel very big, though. Oh. And there we go. Don't want him flicking water all over the lens. But, as the dogfish has come to town, the tide's died, so I'm probably going to try and get a little nap of about 15, 20 minutes there. Especially if the doggies are coming on now. That's not going to be any good for me. Let's get him unhooked, get it back. Still nice to catch fish though, don't get me wrong. And what I'm going to do is leave these just suspended just off the bottom with the reels right down by my head there. So then I'll let the lead hit the bottom and then wind up the length of the tray. So when the boat swings at anchor, which is going to swing in a minute, I won't get them all tangled up and snagged up in the bottom. That's the theory. When the tide goes the other way, I can set my alarm on my phone and hopefully uh, wake up and the tide will be flowing again. <sighs> Just that, what that? Am I cooked yet? What's the time? Any of you guys got any ideas on it? Oh lovely, five to five in the morning. Well nothing woke me up during the night, so I must have had an hour of sleep. I'm gonna check things out out here. It's a bit like a bomb's hit out there, and it's gonna be another sunny day by the look of it. I won't be sorry to see that sun come up. And one thing I know about this boat, it's just that constant slapping on the hull. It's not good for sleeping on, guys. There's barely a breeze and it's still slapping on this cathedral hull. So, not the one to have the best night's sleep on, but very nice for a stable platform. I suppose it's time to get up and have a brew. I wonder why I had nothing on those rods. I had not a sausage. Well, wouldn't have a sausage, would I? Be in a supermarket otherwise. Oh. Well, that line's here, that line's there. What's going on? Oh, that, that accounts for it, people. Everything's gone round the anchor rope. That's why they have had no fish. And that's another reason not to doze off and keep an eye on things. This is my office this morning, guys. Not a bad view, I think you'll agree. Well, the sun's up well now. 7.25, I think I'm going to pull all the lines in. It might be getting bright in the shallow water. I've not had any more bites. Well, dogfish, obviously you're going to get dogfish. I'm going to have one last go outside because I'm getting really tired now. A little bit deeper water, might be lower light level. I'm just waiting for the tide. And I figure if, it's, if I move now, I can put my fresh chum block out and that goes down. That sinks over the slack tide, which is generally a pretty rubbish time for fishing. But that way, the smell from that will mill around a large area. Then when the tide picks up, 
I'm hoping I might just get a good smell trail going there and fingers crossed get one more close out fish for you but here we are this is where I was maybe I see the shore Brackleton Bay over there I wonder how the guys got on last night oh it's very quiet um, it's got inshore historic wreck inshore there very very close to it very close to it close to the shore I'm gonna have a run out further out go out deep pull this back gonna come out probably out here somewhere have a run out there <clears throat> just see what we can catch last night obviously the disaster was I wound the lines out to suspend them the tides turned it's gone all peculiar and it's gone around the anchor rope together with that chum tube has happened before before to me so I'm not surprised I've had it happen with shark uh, bags down as well so it's a risk but that's a got a nice uh, undulate from it and I got a nice hound and I've had some dogs as well and a beautiful evening right croaky and tired now let's have one more throw of the dice see if I can pick one more fish off for you uh, this is the last throw of the dice I think I got the dying flood got myself a nice big half section there of squid now I use those padlocks and I caught on those in the previous film but I'm thinking of using something else so I'm going to be using to take this one down well, it's just a different weight guys that's all it is just a different weight what well, what's wrong with that it's about the right weight it's going to hold bottom don't t listen don't tell me nobody's ever a tied a knot in their line and b used a pair of moral grips I mean you know what the saying is get a grip guys <laughs> oh dear that's quite a good one for uh, considering I've had hardly any sleep about an hours sleep right down go the mole grips see if we can't get a bite on it if we don't get one on this trip you never know it might be on the next trip just getting the dying embers of this flood tide and it is as flat as you could want wind's gone around to northerly that's it the grips are down there's nothing like being i'll put the bags i'll put the bags i'll freshen them up here burn out the last of it i've got the tube down as well ah uh, let's drop this one down a little salt out here got to be careful when you get tired guys i've made a couple of mistakes i'll tell you about them in a minute getting tired fishing on your own not to be recommended really really you need two of you uh, let's do something different with this one he's got no lead on it I'm going to try something different here oh there we go I want to try this for some time actually I've got it off a of mic shed but it doesn't really matter does it look yeah it's okay it's working fish won't be able to bolt away from this one <laughs> there we go people let's see what we can catch on that has anybody on in the world or on YouTube ever used a pair of mole grips for weight and a shed bolt oh. <gasps> I'll tell you what it's got some weight to it it's definitely going down You've got to try things You've got to be out there you've got to live on the edge actually i think i've fallen off the edge many years ago people you're gonna love this you're gonna love this <laughs> look at this i'm not joking the bolt's got a bite on it oh no oh my god i don't think that's a dogfish Let's give him a bit of slack to eat it that's hard to believe that's been out a minute he's going he's going hey come on boys Oh, bolt! Oh my God! Can you imagine the pages of the fishing magazine? All the adverts it's going to be filled up with DIY stuff. They'd be if I get this fish hooked up. They'd be stripping the shelves of all the tools. Big bait though. Could miss him. It's a big bait. He's dropped it. Has he dropped it? No, no. Look, 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 look. He's still tugging at it. Dare I strike, guys? I don't, oh, he's come off. Has he come off? 
It's come off. Oh, what was that? I never know. That's what they call shutting the door before the horse was bolted or something like that. Hopefully, hopefully he'll come back. Well, well. Been down there minutes. Oh, he's there again. I bet it's a doggy. I bet it's a doggy. He's banging. Look, 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 look. He's banging. He's coming up. I'll check the bait. Probably a doggy, but I don't care. I've never caught a fish on a bolt before. If not, we'll put another bait on it. Drop it down again while there's this last bit of tide there. Come on, come on, don't fall off. This is fish of the trip. I don't care if it's a doggy. Come on, what is it? Oh, there's the bolt. And I've got my other line. That's not nice. What is this, some kind of joke? There was a fish there though, people, I think you'll agree. And what's happened? The hook is buried. Let's, let's get that out there again. Hey, out goes the shed bolt. Oh, there's nothing on the padlock, that's disappointing. And the mole grips appear to be quite quiet today. Let's see if I can unscrew on this boat. I think the only thing that's unscrewed is me. It's all fun, guys, it's all fun. If you can't have a laugh, what's the point of doing it? Less and less people with a sense of humour now. Well, warp, warp sense of humour. I joke not, people. The mole grips are going. There's the bite on the mole grips. He's done a big run like that other one. It might even be the same fish. And then he appears to have dropped it again. Perhaps they don't like the rust. I could easily have cleaned it with some WD-40. No, no, no. Look at the rod top. Look at the rod top. Oh, what, what, what? Oh, I love it. Oh, Jesus. Lock it, lock it. He's on. Is he on? I've done the tuna. Wicked tuna. Lock and load. I might have missed him, but you know what, I took a gamble. I took a gamble. <sighs> no, I think there's something there. I think there's something there. I think I've got such a big heavy rod, this is my shark rod. I don't think it's a doggy. I don't care. They like this squid way, way better than they did a mackerel, for sure. Even if it's doggies, man. It's coming up deep. Not a huge fish. Money's on a ray. I'm looking down there. Oh, it's a nice smooth. <laughs> it's a smooth hand on the mole grips. Oh my god. I'll tell you what's good about these mole grips, guys. It stops the bait sliding up the end of the line too much. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's a good one too. He's in. Mole grips. <laughs> oh dear. All you tackle tarts eat your heart out. And there's the fish, guys. As the saying goes, the totally awesome fishing show is back in town. You've got to get down to the DIY store and get stocked up on some more fishing weights. Thanks for watching it. I've enjoyed having you along. That's a cracking fish. And don't forget to watch the totally awesome or TA outdoor show. This guy watches it for sure. Let's get him back. Away like a bullet. There's a run, guys. There's a run. There's a run. There's a run. <laughs> I might stay out tonight as well. Gonna be a first in the world. I feel in the world. There can be nobody that's ever caught a fish on a garden shed bolt. And it's not a doggy. Gonna be another hound, I feel. Man, they love this fresh squid. <laughs> it's even bigger smooth hound. You you're gonna laugh when this bolt whizzes around and takes my teeth out, won't you? Because it's flying around there.
People, it's getting silly. It's, it's getting silly. I'm gonna hold on. Sorry. People think I'm stupid. I'm not. I'm gonna try my car keys. I left the mic off in that last sequence, but it was funny. I liked it. And there we go. Out goes the shed bolt. I'll tell you what's happening. <laughs> I'm catching shed loads of fish. I haven't enjoyed myself so much since I had last tax demand. <laughs> that was some laugh the accountant gave me. Well, that was some fun. Wayne sent me a text, he's gone out shark fishing. Cause, well, I, I would go with him normally, but it's just so flat calm and I had to do that night session. Listen, breakfast, people say, how do you survive? Get yourself one of these Tupperware type boxes, Poundland or somewhere. Put your dry cereal in there with raisins, etc. You've got your milk in a cooler, so the milk's okay, hasn't gone off. In here, you can either eat it out here, or if you're really into restaurateur, you can use a bowl. The wife's given me this pretty, I think it's, I think it's Mike's dog, I think it's Jax's dog bowl, I'm not sure. I've eaten out of it before, I'm sure the dog hasn't caught anything. <laughs> I just eat it straight out of the tub like this. Now how easy is that? I wonder how many bites I'm going to get through here before I get a bite down there. Because the little clicks you might pick up on the microphone is something eating the shed bolt. Mm, what a day. That's worth losing some sleep over. Ah, oh, fish on. Just when I was about to get daydreaming. Pouting. Start of the ebb. Always good. Start and finish of a tide. Shore fishing, beach fishing, rock fishing, boat fishing. Dog fishing. It's a doggy. Listen, still a fish. Still a fish on a broken cardboard. Look at this, look how much pressure it takes. <laughs> Won't I cry if it breaks. A doggy, and there is my roving lead ball weight, guys. See, so it doesn't tangle. It's a little bit snaggy out here. So I put that one on for my, for my small, uh, small hooks. Not often you see the south coast of England, or indeed any ocean, as flat as this. And it's going to be very hot today. Not so much out here at the sea, but a bit inland. I can actually see all the pollution there. Can you see it? Portsmouth, Southampton, all the pollution is there. And you come back along the coast where there's no population, it's about that far up from the um, sort of purpley haze. I've seen it in Los Angeles, you see it in lots of cities. About this far off the land, if you go along, I keep very still. It's pretty clear here, but if you pan along slowly, it builds up with a population density. Bosch, Gospel, Portsmouth, South Sea, Southampton, and the wind is just drifting it this way. Straight down my lungs. Hey, Mabel, Mabel, you want to wake up now, love? There's a, there's a big cloud of stuff coming. That'll put you to sleep, probably for good, I should think. Not a bad thing. It's coming this way, love. It's coming this way. It's that barber dioxide stuff, or whatever they call it. You die from that, you know, Chuck, barber dioxide. Whoa, nice spotted rays, guys. Oh, what a session I'm having. Oh, I got the full house. I got the bolt. I got the mole grips. Oh, you gotta laugh at me. You cry otherwise. And I've got more than padlock. Who in the history of world's fishing has ever caught a really good spotted ray using a padlock as a bait? As a bait? I must get some sleep. As a weight. Nice spotted rays. They're really pretty fish, these. That's the second one. So I had one yesterday and one today. 
and there's a bite on this one. Smith or somebody watch that please. Thank you.